Okay, in this um, video, in this session, we're going to talk about um, how the various emissions, different emissions are formed and also their health effects. Okay, so we're going to start with um, carbon monoxide. Uh, principally, this is formed due to uh, incomplete combustion. Um, so, don't worry, I won't expect you to um, remember this formula, um, but basically, this is what's happening. So, you're reacting your hydrocarbon with some oxygen, but not all of the carbon from the fuel is being completely oxidised. That's what you want, it's obviously CO2. But some of it um, isn't completely oxidised, and so you just end up with um, CO, which is carbon monoxide. And this tends to be when the mixture is um, either fuel rich or um, oxygen lean. Um, so you haven't got enough air basically to for um, complete combustion. In terms of um, health effects, um, carbon monoxide is basically toxic to humans. And it's pretty dangerous actually because um, quite a few people, well, an insignificant, not a insignificant number of people, um, have been killed by carbon monoxide poisoning um, in England and Wales, um, either through faulty boilers or um, quite a few people have actually been killed by um, campers who, um, by sorry, um, barbecues that haven't been extinguished, so they've gone out camping, um, poured water on the barbecue, um, it's cold, so they think it's out, so they bring it into the porch so no one steps on it, but because they poured a lot of water on it, what they've done is they've taken heat out of the um, out of the combustion, but the um, the charcoals the charcoals continue to smolder, and basically because it hasn't combusted completely, it's produced CO, and because they're in a confined environment, it's been the um, concentration of CO has risen in the tent and it's been fatal. So it is very dangerous, um, and obviously. Um, there's been lots of campaigns in terms of people getting to fix their boilers to prevent that from happening in the home as well. So quite toxic and it's formed by incomplete combustion. Unburned hydrocarbons. Um, these um, again are formed when the fuel isn't um, completely burnt and can be formed in a number of ways. Either by um, fuel which is avoiding the flame front, not that it's um, running away from the flame front. But rather that, <coughs> if you think of the um, design of the combustion can or uh, the um, cylinder of a combustion engine, there's lots of crevices um, in there, sort of around the valves, the spark plug, um, the gap between the piston and the cylinder wall, where fuel can, um, and where the fuel in air mixture is, but it's not easy for the fuel to combust. So. In these kind of areas, um, you tend to get poor combustion or poor mixing and poor combustion. And this leads to unburnt hydrocarbons. And it can also um, be affected by a weak flame front or, you know, a low combustion temperature, um, which also leads to unburnt hydrocarbons. And if you, if you look at back at my um, lecture on combustion, we talked about this, saying that we need sufficient time and temperature and turbulence for combustion. So you need sufficient temperature. And if you haven't got sufficient temperature in your flame front, you're not going to be able to break down your fuel. It won't react with the air and you're going to get unburnt hydrocarbons um, as an emission source. So the effects of these, um, they can form ground level ozone, which is harmful to health. And they can also contrib contribute to photochemical smogs, um, which is obviously also detrimental to in terms of health. Um, and one thing, important thing I should say here is um, unburned hydrocarbons are separate to particulate matter. So the name, the clues in the name really, and hydrocarbons are um, carbon and hydrogen, whereas particulate matter is just carbon, it's just soot. So talking about particulate matter then, um, Again, this is formed due to incomplete combustion. And actually, the exact mechanism by which um, particulate matter is formed is still not completely understood, but essentially it's um, thought to be formed by nucleation. So um, during the combustion process, um, you have some uh, elemental particles of carbon, and they act as a nucleation site to basically grow particulate matter. 
um, so other bits of carbon will start to attach itself to that and that can be volatile or non-volatile and the, basically the depending on the um, uh, the conditions in the cylinder for combustion um, that um, uh, particulate will grow depending on um, the equivalence ratio and temperature and pressure and um, all those sorts of things so this is what I say when it's um, quite complex and no one has really understood it they're still work exactly working out we're trying to predict how these um, how parti particulate matter is formed and how it grows in combustion systems so um, in the um, textbooks you you might see PM10 and PM2.5 and basically these refer to particles that are less than 10 microns or 2.5 microns respectively and um, so they kind of segregated out into those size ranges um, depending on because the smaller it is um, the more damage it can do because the smaller the um, the particulate matter it will bypass your natural defenses in your uh, nasal passageways um, be able to get down into your lungs and some of the particulate matter is now um, so fine that it can even cross the, um, the the barrier in your lungs and get into your bloodstream and you can even um, in the case of pregnant women um, end up in the fetus as well so it can cause harmful effects such as asthma lung cancer and you know even birth um, problems now that they're discovering so it's a kind of a big problem and hence why um, diesels are getting such a bad press at the minute because um, diesel engines as we we'll talk about um, later in this session um, kind of um, generate more particulate matter than compared to uh, gasoline cars okay so um, particulate matter um, as I said is quite complex and it's linked to many of the um, parameters of a combustion system um, and one of the things is um, linked to is the um, equivalence ratio and what this graph shows is it shows um, the variation with equivalence ratio of um, the particulate mass which is a red line and the number of particulates okay so the number concentration and this is fuel air equivalence ratio so one is obviously stoichiometry so we're rich fuel rich this side of the one and fuel lean this side of one so you can see that for quite a rich mixture we've got very high um, uh, relatively high mass concentration and relatively low number concentration and as we start to go lean the two two graphs kind of cross over so if we start going um, leaner and leaner which is what we want from a um, from a co2 point of view so the, the the leaner we can run our our engines the less co2 we're using if we can deliver the same power and this is what um, car manufacturers are trying to achieve so we go lean and we reduce the um, we have a double benefit not only do we reduce the amount of co2 we're using but also um, we reduce the mass of particulates and great we think but that's um, you know we're, we're got a double win but the problem here is that the number concentration is increasing so if you think about this see the mass is decreasing um, and the number is increasing therefore the diameter of those um, particles is becoming extremely small because um, the mass is decreasing and the number is increasing so the diameter of those particles must be you know decreasing um, you know to the power of three sort of um, to, to the exponents they're getting very very small they're becoming what we call um, ultra fines and it sees ultra fine particles that are being formed with these lean mixtures which we want from a co2 point of view they're causing the problems in terms of the health effects because it's the ultra fine particles that get into the bloodstream that i was talking about on the previous slide so um we want to reduce the amount of mass that's good but it's had this knock-on consequence of producing these ultra fine particles Okay, nitrogen oxides. Um, this can, like, NOx can be formed um, in kind of three distinct ways. And again, um, the way 
um, the way that this can be done is the first way is um, thermal NOx, okay? And this is basically means it's due to high temperature. So obviously thermal the temperature. And what happens is um, during the um, combustion process, if there's the temperatures are high enough, then it basically breaks down the nitrogen. So if you remember in the combustion lecture, we were assuming that the nitrogen didn't play, take any part in the reaction. It just went from the left-hand side of the equation to the right-hand side of the equation. And it was inert and it didn't take part in combustion. But as I say, if the temperature is high enough, then um, the nitrogen, the bonds between the nitrogen will break down and it will start reacting with the air and forming NOx. And that's what thermal NOx is. It's a dissociation of nitrogen at the high temperatures. Um, fuel NOx is the second one. And as the name suggests, these are nitrogen oxides that are formed by um, nitrogen in your fuel. Um, obviously, if you're burning methane, you won't get any fuel NOx. But if you're burning gasoline or diesel and you've got um, uh, a big um, variation in composition of the fuel, you, you, you are likely to get um, uh, fuel NOx. And the last one is called prompt NOx. And this is a bit of a catch all really, because it's the name for the term for NOx that formed by processes other than the other two. And so it's a bit kind of um, perhaps not a satisfactory um, definition. Um, but if, for example, nitrogen in the air reacts with radicals such as uh, carbon CH, you know, the soup I showed you in the, at the introduction. So some of those free radicals react with the, the nitrogen in the air, forming NOx. Now, out of all of these three um, in combustion sy systems, thermal NOx is by far the dominant mechanism. So it's now the, um, the aim of um, the engineers who design these combustion systems to try and reduce the, um, the combustion temperature as much as possible to reduce the thermal NOx and hence overall NOx um, from the engines. In terms of the, um, the health effect of NOx, it has a number of um, health conditions, um, such as inflammation of the lungs, it can exacerbate asthma, um, and those similar um, uh, conditions related to lungs. And also it can, can contribute to um, acid rain. Okay, uh, lastly then, um, sulfur dioxide. Again, this is predominantly formed by combustion of fo fossil fuels to generate electricity. Um, so coal is particularly um, a big um, producer of sulfur dioxide due to the sulfur that's in the fuel. And it is basically just the oxidization of the sulfur. So sulfur reacts with the oxygen to give you sulfur and dioxide. And this um, irritates nose, airways, um, causes shortness of breath. Again, it's another um, gas that exacerbates conditions associated with the lungs, such as um, asthma and so on. And um, also risk groups, uh, um, sorts of groups um, such as asthmatics at risk of developing further problems as well. However, um, SO2, as you maybe remember, um, can also react with the atmosphere could, to cause um, acid rain, which is another knock-on consequence of uh, sulfur dioxide.